What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Community Corner Podcast. I'm Arnov. And I'm Nikhil, and today we're going to be peeling back the layers on an issue that's close to everyone's heart, sustainable business practices. We're going to be exploring how businesses today are integrating sustainability into their day-to-day strategies and why it's changing the future of commerce. Mm -hmm. There's always that age-old notion of, quote-unquote, business as usual, but um, in today's day and world, we're undergoing a shift, right? A very green and sustainable shift. Businesses aren't just about profits anymore. They're about purpose. So I think it's very important that um, we talk about this today and let's dive into this invigorating world. Mm -hmm. So I think what's really first important to understand is kind of the the background, the kind of history behind these sustainable business practices and shift, right? I think that there are a lot of factors that are at play here. First of all, you know, there's escalating environmental crises. You know, we're hearing all over the news Um, you know, no matter the country, really, no matter the location, the continent that, you know, there's rising sea levels, you know, that, you know, there's a lot of greenhouse gases or GHGs that are being released and things like that. And so another thing that's also important is that consumer preferences are, you know, shifting towards more ethical brands and, you know, brands that have more sustainable practices. And in addition to that, there's also this kind of realization that sustainable businesses can actually be very profitable, right? Um, and I think together, these three factors are really the main driving force towards this transition. 100%. And I think there's many examples that showcase exactly how businesses are innovating sustainability, right? Um, I think one very prominent example is through packaging, for instance. So many brands are ditching the single-use plastics and opting for biodegradable and recyclable materials. So this is obviously better for the community because of the obvious. It's biodegradable and recyclable, right? Um, and But it also like promotes revenue because... Consumers are more inclined to be with this brand because of the fact that they're environmentally dri- driven, right? Um, the younger generation is more environmentally driven per se, um, and they would like to be with brands that have that mindset as well. It just it's a more personal connection with them, and they realize that this brand is something is doing something good for the community. Companies like Coca Cola and Un- Unilever have committed to significant reductions in plastic use. Um, and this not only curbs pollution, but it kind of also resonates with the eco-conscious consumers that does overall um, drive brand growth, which increases revenue overall. No, I'm actually really glad you brought that up because literally this is this is a total coincidence. But literally just yesterday, I was drinking a Coke late at night, and uh, you know I looked at the bottle for whatever reason. It was it literally said like this bottle was 100% reused from plastic. Or sorry, it was just reused, right? It didn't say that it was from plastic, obviously. Um, but I thought that was really interesting because it literally looked and felt like a regular Coke bottle. Like it felt like nothing changed. And I think that really goes to show that these things can still be profitable. You know, it, it can really still give you kind of a similar field. Um, obviously this can vary by business, right? It's not like you can, uh, you know, make an iPhone totally, you know, transitioning from whatever material it is right now to just something totally 100% um, biodegradable, but it's something to work towards. And, you know, it is something that's totally possible and on the table. A hundred percent. Um, and it's all about that blend of uh, environmental responsibility and smart business strategy. Um, and it's those initial events, investments, right? Which is adapting to new technologies and even resistance to change um, with the organization. But um, moving beyond the actual products, how are businesses ensuring sustainability in their supply chains? For sure. This is just so crucial to the business's day-to-day functions, right? Many businesses are really scrutinizing their supply chains, you know, to ensure ethical labor practices and to minimize their carbon footprint. So by partnering with suppliers who share those kind of same sustainable values, businesses can really create a ripple effect in this industry. 100%. Um, and industries like, let's say, the coffee industry are leading charge in sustainable sourcing, right? Brands like Starbucks are collaborating with farmers to promote sustainable farming practices. And by doing so, they ensure not just the quality and traceability of their beans, but also support local communities and the environment. Like literally, we have things called farmer markets where profits go like, directly to the farmers and all the products are organic without GMOs and they're just better for the environment overall. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who don't know, GMOs are gen- genetically modified organisms, or not organisms, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, genetically modified organisms, and therefore, like for example, crop resistance, um, um, 
with like insecticides and pesticides so it's just overall better for the growth of the of the crop the fastness of how it grows and also specific vitamins or minerals that will be enhanced that is better for health but what it can lead to is fertilizer runoff which is bad for the environment as some habitats can be destroyed um, leading to displacement of animals organisms so it also does have an ecological effect so these farmer markets mostly are organic and so um, by promoting growth of the of, of farmer markets we're we're giving money directly to the farmers, which is supporting these local businesses and also being very environmentally conscious. So it's just a, um, a great point and a great movement we have in the 21st century. Yes, I know we've been talking a lot about some of these bigger corporations. I know we mentioned Starbucks, we mentioned uh, you know Apple, Coca-Cola, all these all these different companies that are making strides in this, in this kind of arena. Um, but what's also important to understand is that smaller businesses also have the agility and the, the kind of the ability and that push factor to push towards this direction, you know, adopt more sustainable practices. And what's really good about this is they can really adopt those practices in very niche areas. A lot of these small businesses really target a very specific niche, um, a very specific aspect of life. And so they can really build trust with a loyal customer base or consumer base and even partner with larger businesses to really amplify that impact. Mm -hmm. And I think on that note, um, it's time to shift towards circular economies, right? Um, I know we have we kind of had an entire episode on this. Um, if you guys want to go back and watch that, but we're just gonna you know, tie it in with what we're talking about today. So, how do businesses really fit this concept into what they're doing, and how it to sustainable business practices, Nikhil? Okay, so in a traditional or also known as a kind of a linear economy, what ends up happening is there's this kind of saying of take, make, dispose. So essentially, you know, you make something, you manufacture something. Um, once it's used, you kind of just throw it away. You never see it again. You know, it's kind of the end of the story there. But with a circular economy, the entire idea is that um, businesses are designing products that are meant for reusing and recycling. So the aim is to essentially minimize waste and make the most value out of your resources available to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a really prominent example of this is tech gadgets, right? So companies like Fairphone are designing modular smartphones where individuals' parts can be replaced, which basically avoids the need. To discard the entire phone For sure. and it's all about that duality of having sustainability and innovation hand in hand which is basically a win-win situation driving up the sustainability efforts and also boosting um growth as these parts can be recycled and used in other iphones which you know um promotes the need for less resources needing to be bought um so overall it's just a win-win situation and how we can be basically intertwined towards sustainable business practices that many brands use to this day mm -hmm. and I think that it's also kind of important to look at this kind of in a futuristic lens. You know, these sustainable practices are not things that will really show that big of an impact like right now, but it's really something that's going to affect future generations and literally centuries on end, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, literally after we die, like that's those are things that are still going to be in effect. You know, it's really just leaving a long lasting legacy. And I think a world where sustainability isn't a strategy is just it's not something where we want to go you know mm -hmm. uh, we want profits and purposes right in terms of sustainability to coexist harm harmoniously and i think i think we're making great strides toward that trajectory you know and it's really just up to businesses and consumers um alike to really pave that path to really succeed in that industry for sure um, and I think on that note, we're going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you so much, our audience, for joining us today on this enlightening journey. Remember, every sustainable choice counts both in business and in life. And even a 1% contribution every day compounds and makes a huge impact in the future. So um, on that note, stay informed, stay green, and see you in the next episode of the Community Corner Podcast. Peace. Peace.